Hi there. We are so glad you joined us today for this message. We hope you enjoy it. Kick back, learn about Jesus, and be blessed. Talk to you soon. All right. So just to bring us back down to normal. Wow, I shouldn't do that, should I? No. uh -uh. All right. We'll go abnormal. There was this blonde lady, and uh, she called her boyfriend and said, Hey, I'm putting together this puzzle, and I cannot figure it out. For the life of me. And he said, well, what is it about? What is it? She said, it's supposed to be a rooster. She goes, but I don't even know how to start it. So he said, well, I'm not doing anything. I'll be over in a few minutes and I'll try to help you. And she said, okay. So he comes over. He comes in. She takes him into where she's got the puzzle all spread out on the table. And he says, "Uh, wow. I can look at this and tell you we are not going to make anything that resembles a rooster out of this at all. She said, really? And he looked at the box. He goes, yeah, no. He took her by the hand and said, I want you to calm down. Let's have a cup of tea. And calm, she calms down, have a cup of tea. And uh, a <clears throat> minute, a couple minutes later, he, uh, he says, all right, now that we're calmed down and we've had some tea, Let's put the cornflakes back in the box. <laughs> All right. That's, I don't know if anybody got that, but anyway. What a start. Thank you guys for, for your testimonies. Thank you for singing. Thank you, brother, for your shout out to the Lord. Amen. We all need to be so bold. To be able to speak up. Amen. Unhappy difference among the church. This is a... No, 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 no. But this is where we're at in the gospel. And that's why I stopped where I was at last time. Didn't go through the whole chapter because now we're, we're faced with this. And it's so incredible how God works that we are faced with things when they're actually happening around us. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that suck? I mean, it's tough, but it is. It's right there in our faces a lot of times, right? And we, and we just read. How many of you read Scripture all the time and like, oh, I never see this happen in my life? I'm telling you, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you see it happening in your life as you go through this book. And I've said this for years now that I've had this opportunity here at this church. Man, these things are happening as we're... As, as the week pertains to, and uh, so, anyways, as we go through this, th- we see an unhappy difference among the church. Now, last week, we saw this, a very public, unhappy difference with the church. And uh, so, they, uh, they came and reported all the wonderful things that they had been doing as they were traveling the country, and all the Gentiles that had been saved And then the Jewish men stood up and said, but wait a minute, they can't be saved unless they're circumcised. And then if you're circumcised, Jesus says, if you're circumcised, then you have to follow the whole law. So here we go around again. We're going to make this thing happen, right? So here's an unhappy difference in the church already here where people stand up and say, no, we got to do it like this. And then the Holy Spirit tells them, no, we're supposed to do it like this. So we're on track and now we're, we got to blow up again. And that was very public, a very public disagreement. They handled it. We learned how to handle things by the way they handled that. They went back to the patriarchs and said, hey, what's up with this? They elected some men and said, we're going to write a letter and have you guys deliver it, right? And so we stopped at that point, and now we are going to see the council's letter to the Gentiles being delivered. And uh, before I start, I would like to read a scripture that pertains to today on my heart that is not the scripture we're reading. And that is James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, count it all joy in some aspects. Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials, many of many kinds, 
We have a sister over here that was singing about trials and testifying about trials that she has overcome. God is so cool. We have a brother who comes in talking about things that he's overcome and dealt with and glorifying the Lord. We, we have Dolores reading something that she wrote that basically talks about overcoming the, the time of this world and what we do and how we act. <sighs> yeah. Whenever you face trials of any kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. And when you read that scripture, you can go on and read the rest of it. But what we want is lacking nothing. Lacking absolutely nothing. We want Jesus to be a part of everything. We want to be able to stand up and at the top of our voices yell about how fantastic God is and what he's done in my life. Amen? So much power in that. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. Lord, we know that uh, you say that when we need wisdom, if we ask, you will not hold it back. You'll pour it out on us. Lord, we're asking for wisdom today as we read your word, as we go through these things. Lord, we just ask that you would minister in your Holy Spirit in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, boy. I'm overwhelmed. So, verse 22 is where we're going to start at. It says, Then the apostles and the elders with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men to send to send uh, them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. So they chose Judas, called Barabbas, and Silas. Men who were leaders among the believers. With them they sent the following letter. Men who were leaders among the believers. We talked about this on on Sun on Saturday with our men's breakfast. What is it to deal with these things? How do we do this? How do we come about this? I really wanted to just pound on that. But I have, there's other things, <laughs> there's so much. I could have taken up the rest of the afternoon until we were decorating for Christmas just speaking to you all, but you all would have run out because a lot of people want to watch the game and you're hungry, right? So in Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28, we see that the Lord says, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles, Lord, it over them. What does that mean? Lord it over him. I'm telling you what to do. You do what I do and that's what I tell you to do and that's or don't do as I do, tell do as I tell you to do. Is that I'm saying it wrong still. But you guys know you've had that said to you, right? Do as I say, not as I do. There's the right language settled into it. <clears throat> Lording over people in their high official, exor- highly uh, their high officials exercise them uh, authority over people. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life. As a ransom for many. How we think about that. As we get into this here. The, the picture that we have a lot of times in our mind. Is to be a leader in men. Means to rule. Over. Yourself more than people. To have self control. And you can't get self control without getting everything else on that list. To have that self-control to rule yourself that you are a servant to all no matter who and what they do. That's hard. 
And I'm talking about men, but it stands for women too. The word says men in everything we're reading, but it stands for women too. In, in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 plus to 28, so then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. It says rule or have dominion. In some text it says dominion. This is rule. Uh, in the NIV, that's that's serious, guys. Sometimes we worship the things that we're supposed to be ruling over, and we get things backwards. Just like she was talking about Christmas, we start to worship the opposite thing that we're, we we get lost in translation. <clears throat> so God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them, male and female, them, male and female, nothing other than that, male and female. No questions asked. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. What does that mean? What are we supposed to do? God created us to do what? Men and women together, we create. God created us in His image to create beings, to fill the earth and rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the, in the sky and every living creature that moves on the ground. Every living creature. But first we have to rule over our own flesh and our own selves. Right? Are you following me? We're to rule over all things that were created. Not worship all things that were created. If we are to rule over all things that created and only one created us. And he only created two kinds of us. Yeah, we're all different. But he only created two kinds that were supposed to make more of the two kinds. Because the animals are doing it. I want you guys to do it. And you're going to take care of them. We get it backwards a lot of times. We get it messed up. In Proverbs, talking about being leaders, we need to know where we come from. As these men knew where they came from, when the problem came up, they went back to where they came from. When a problem comes up with us, where do we need to go? Back to his word, back to God. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 11 through 18. The faithless will be fully repaid for their ways, but the good rewarded for theirs. In some texts, when you see this, it'll have man in there. The faithless man will be fully repaid for their ways. Faithless. What does it mean to be faithless? It means hmm? untrustworthy. Untrustworthy. I mean, just a flake, right? Not knowing who created you. Not knowing what you're supposed to be doing as a man. Not just going around and causing havoc with all things. The simple believe anything. Are you simple today? I mean, I'm simple. But being simple as a man means I need to be prudent. And then give thoughts to my step. Give thoughts to every step I make. Do we do that a lot? We don't do that. Sometimes we just run. Deborah told me something yesterday. We went with the kids and had a good day. We are having fun. She said, I want to go to this store. It's a $7 or what store? I'm like, okay. So we drove all the way to the mall. Went in the mall. And I said, there's the store. $7 and more. And uh, it's a clothes store. 
clothing store for women only. And uh, she's like, that's not the store I was talking about. The other one where they have all kinds of stuff and it's $7. And I was like, oh, well, here, we're going to go all the way across town. Come on, kids, let's load up. <clears throat> just running, huh? not getting my information, getting, just going, oh, yeah, I know where we're going. I didn't know nothing. Sometimes we have to admit that, right? Just absolutely don't have any idea or clue at all. It was a great day, and we saw two malls. We saw two different Santa Claus. We saw two different of everything, because you don't just walk into the mall and go right to the place. You go through the mall with all the people, right, and the parking and the cussing. And the, that's my spot. That's my spot. And you're like, thank you, Jesus. Everybody and the kids are like, why are people cussing about spots? And I'm like, well, uh, you can buy another car, but it's hard to find a spot, right? <clears throat> the wise fear the Lord and shun evil. And the foolish, <clears throat> now, Ark, this is not for you. as for me. Right? Uh, but a fool is a hothead. Uh, quick to tempered person does foolish things. I know that. I know that. And the one who devises evil schemes is hated. How much do you believe that? How many of you know someone that just is very destructive? And, and makes evil schemes, always something going on. And you're just like, I can't be around those people. You could pray for those people. You don't have to be around them. Amen? So, it's being a lover of God and a lover of good is what a qualified leader is. A leader among the believers. And someone that can change, Right? They're sending these guys in a way that they know that these guys are not going to go down there and go, Hey, man, last time I went out hunting, I was, oh, and we did this and we did that. Or a bunch of guys that are going to go down and go, I caught a fish and it was that big and everything. No. They have a job. They're going to do a job. These men, we know, they're going to go down there and talk about Jesus. So a good leader is also somebody that can hear the conversation start to go that way. And turn it back, right? Turn every conversation back around to the Lord. Don't you hate those people? I mean, really. We've all been in a spot where I can't even talk to them about nothing because everything goes back to God. That's good. But we, when, we're, when we're dealing with that, when we're not full of that, we just go, That's, I can't talk to that person. But you need to, right? And you need to be that person. Redirecting the traffic back to the Lord. Amen. So, and then, and then, uh, the, uh, verse 23, we're, we're moving fast. Uh, with them was the following letter. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, uh, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, in Critia. Is that it? Yeah, something like that. Greetings. I always love letters that start out with greetings, right? We have heard some, someone went out from you without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. Has that happened all the time? All the time? Will we talk couple weeks back about germs in your mind that passed on by people sneezing on you or puking on you or telling their story or whatever my truth that's a big thing now that's that's my truth I know my truth but what about the truth right I just that my truth is one side and it's not God's side most of the time so they're troubling them so we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friend, now this is cool, Barnabas and Paul. Now before we see Paul and Barnabas, now 
I don't know if you guys know, but in this situation, Barnabas was one that slid towards the side that Peter was on, right? Well, we need to we need to keep some of these laws and probably you might be able to get them circumcised to do this thing if they want to be Christians. So they put Barnabas first. Now they know we straighten this out, but we know that he's also going to be the one that we need to be the point man in this because Paul, you know, he's the one that's gone around and and said things this way and done things this way. Yeah, he's not working for the Roman government now. He's working for God now. So we'll leave Barnabas being the point man on this thing. And and he says, men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not talking about the two guys that they're sending with them. We're talking about all the guys that are going have risked their lives. In this day here, we're so comfortable right now in our lives. We can talk about whatever you want. You can carry your Bible anywhere in this world. You can go into a government building with your Bible. You know, you, places you cannot take a gun, you can take this. In these days, in those days, uh, you're more apt to get stoned or imprisoned or whatever, risking your life with sticking your neck out for the Lord. We don't know that. We don't know that. Lord, I hope we never have to know that. But we need to know that we should be prepared for those types of things. Time could be coming and true and soon. So we choose these men, men who have risked their life. It says 27, therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to comfort, uh, confirm by the word of mouth what we are writing. To confirm by the word of mouth what we are writing. And, and here's the deal. These men, they know who they are. They're going down there to do business. They're not going to mess around. They're going to be upstanding men who are going to show what needs to be done and say what needs to be done and no more. Right? They're not going to go down there and be real good over here and, and do this preaching thing and walk around and talk about stuff and then go to the tavern and tear it up and they'll go, wait a minute. You know, they're not going to be those type of guys. They're about the Father's business, right? They're in the business of converting people. They're in the business of... of Sharing the word of God with people. Leaders among believers. Do we have that? I mean, do we have that in this church? I think we do. I think we're growing some men up in this church and women to be leaders among believers. That's the whole purpose of why we do what we do and how we do what we do. And why we come together so many times. Why we study over and over. Why we have testimony time. See what's going on. That encourages us, right? What's going on in other people's lives and how God's doing. That's what they did every time they came together. It was a testimony about what happened where we were at. What happened where we were at. Do you guys realize a lot of churches don't do that? But do you realize too that the people that have the wrong attitude usually are the ones that come into the church and go, well, my week was terrible. Nothing's changed. It's just the same thing that's been 10 years ago happened to me is still my problem today. And you can talk about it. And next year you'll see them and it's like, oh, 10 years ago, no, 11 years ago now and 17 months and 47 seconds ago. Because we keep track of it, right? Why do we keep track and we gravitate to the horrible things? When something good happens, we forget, oh, I forgot to tell you about that. What do you mean you didn't tell me about this? That's important that that happened. That, that lady was healed. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that. But, did you, but you told me about the, the one who was cussing you out. Yeah, well, uh, uh, why are we like, why, are we, why do we do that? 
We blot those things out, right? We need to blot those things out and go on with the good, right? Amen. So in 28, it says, It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. Anything beyond the following requirements. Now, how many of you know somebody that's at a point in their life they're coming to the Lord. They're starting to clean up their language. They're starting to clean up their life. And you know if you just put that one extra thing on them, they're going to break. Right? Yes, we're at this point. I don't want to put anything more on you because what does Jesus say? My burden is light. My yoke is easy. I want to put one more thing on you. And how many of you are going through something in your life right now, this week, and somebody came along and went, oh, no. More discouraging news from the what happened in the church weekly bulletin, you know. What? I don't see it eye to eye with this or that. But we don't need to put other things on people that they don't deserve. Amen? We get ourselves in enough trouble getting into roles and taking on things that we don't need to be involved in. And we don't need to have that burden upon ourselves, but we want it. It's crazy. So what do they tell them? They tell them all things that right now, today, if you guys abstain from these things, they're telling them to abstain from them, you are going to be more healthy. Spiritually, physically, mentally. Right? What do they tell them? Abstain from food sacrificed to idols. Well, I don't know about that. I eat over at this one place, and who knows what they do in the backyard. Well, Paul, Paul addresses that later on as we come to that. He, he addresses that down the road. Right now, these guys are all in this ritualistic ritual thing that they got to do all these things. Just, just don't eat food that's sacrificed to idols. Simple, Right? I know where to go to get my meat. I know where to go to eat. And then, from blood. From blood. Don't eat it. Don't drink it. How many of you drink blood? How many of you eat blood? Now, some people say, well, I can't eat a piece of meat without blood in it. But that's not always true. If you if you meat, I don't want to get too gross, but if, if if something is butchered and butchered in in a slaughter place, it is cut and hung, and the blood comes out of it. People say, "Well, not all the blood can come out of it." It's the same way they make things kosher, and the priests put their stamp on it. There's no blood in this product; it's now kosher. Well, did you you got you, did you tear it all, cut it all into pieces to make sure? No. Cut the head off of it, let it hang for a certain amount of time. That's no, that's good. So, in that, there's another thing that's just healthy for you. Most of us don't even take blood in our diets, right? Now there is some cultures that they eat. Stuff called blood pudding and blood sausage and things like that that are made from blood. And and, uh, if somebody tells you, hey, you want some blood sausage, what are you going to say? No. People like it, right? If somebody says, do you want some sausage and you eat it, and then later they say, that's blood sausage, you're like, thanks. Bless me, Lord, please take it out. Right? I don't know, you know. We, uh, I've slaughtered rabbits and cut rabbits up and fried rabbits and fed it to the girls and said, uh, here's some chicken. And they ate it. And it was like, this is good. And I said, it was rabbit. They're like, ah, I hate you. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay, so anyway. I digress. And then, here again, simple things, right? Don't eat the meat of a strangled animal. 
Why? Simple. Huh? It's suffered. It's not bled. That's the only reason. Now, in my mind, I'm, I'm going, Lord, you better I, I, tell me what to say here. And my, I'm fighting with myself. Well, what, what if it drowns? All right. How many of us eat something that drowned it? Nobody. Well, that's choking. That's choking it out. You ever seen a fish? When we take a fish out of the water, and my head's going, oh, when you take a fish out of the water, now it's drowning in the air. What? No, Lord, I don't know what this means. And so I'm reasoning back and forth with myself, but can't this be this and that? No. It means that it was murdered. Now, you've seen deer hanging on a fence or hang, or a cat. Sad to see, but a cat gets stuck walking across the top of a picket fence. Gets his leg hung in there. Now it wasn't strangled, but it died and it started rotting the fence away by the time somebody found it, right? It's a sad thing. It's the same thing in something out that's a roadkill. But something that is strangled is not bled. So, and it's something that's murdered. Uh, it's not for food. It was something that something intentionally said, this is a way I'm going to take this out. That's not honoring God. All right? It's very simple. And then, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. There is a host of things, and even now more today than back then. It's more readily available, more ways to do it, more ideas about how many sexes they are and how many relationships you can, and all that kind of stuff. Crazy of the way people go and the way that things happen. But sexual immorality. From there, in the beginning, in the garden, the Lord came in and said, Who told you you were naked? Why did they cover themselves up? What's all this? It was embarrassing, Right? He tells us, and this is funny, this is just the way I think. He, he tells us that we won't even see the kingdom of heaven unless we are childlike. You know, your little boy. He don't care if he's got a diaper on running around the house. He don't know. Right? He don't know. He'll run around until somebody tells him different. That's childlike. That's the way they were. They were running around until somebody... Oh, we're naked. Oh, right? Sexual immorality was instantaneous, instantaneous thing that took man out. I bet you it was a while before he had to eat, right? Anything that was meat, <clears throat> the way I read it, he was given everything, but the plants were for food for him. And the animals were given the plants for food too. (laughs) That's weird. You can do that study on your own. That didn't happen for meat for a while yet. Just everybody's supposed to eat the green stuff in the in the original. So, as we look at this, it's all very simple, right? They're not. They're they're going to be abstaining from some things that are just going to keep them healthy and separate, right? From, from the Gentiles who would eat whatever and whenever they could. And they thought that the Gentiles were just food for the fire and hell. That's all they were worth to them. They're just coal for the fire and hell. That's all they're worth. No more than that. That's what the Jews believed about them. Now they're coming with the message and they're being they're getting the Holy Spirit and everything else. We're not going to put anything more on these people than what they need. And what they need is to have something, some kind of rules from their heritage, so they can start this walk. It's going to quiet the Jews and it's going to settle everything that we've been doing. Right? They send a man who by his heritage would be able to do that with Paul as his backup. And uh, Judas and Silas with him. In uh, here's the thing that uh, 
one of the verses that is always messed up by man is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Always messed up by man. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Every, everybody, everybody, common to mankind, everybody, right? And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And that's all they, right there, just frame that. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He'll never give me anything more than what I can handle. But they don't finish it. Because God will pour it on to you. He'll pour it straight on to you. Because how do we come to Him? We have to be broken. How do you get broken? Lots of pressure. What does pressure do? It takes an old lump of coal and turns it into what? To a diamond. God made that. He designed that outside of us. That's just another thing that tells us what he's doing to us. Right? Putting the pressure on. But here. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. That's what he's doing right here. He's like, okay, there's a bunch of pressure in the church. Here's a letter to give them a way out. Just a little bit, you know, you, and, and uh, they're excited, right? Well, right now the letter's being delivered, but they're excited to write it. James stood up and went, man, here's some wisdom right here. You guys are speaking all this, and the Lord told me this scripture confirms the way we're supposed to do this. We saw that in, in last week, right? A word of wisdom. Not, not something that you studied, not something that you got out of God's Word, but God said, look, this makes sense. This is what you need to do. A word of wisdom. How many of you get that? Lots of people get that and go, that's what I need to do. And then they turn around and go to the wrong mall. <laughs> right? That's me. Go to the wrong mall. Drive across town to the right mall. I was half listening to you. <clears throat> so, he will provide a way out. He don't take the pressure off of you, but he gives you an exit. He gives you a way that you don't have to deal with that thing. You don't have to take all that pressure. He gives you a way out. What is our way out today? In this Christmas season, what is our way out? Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way out. The way, the truth, the light. The life that we must lead. <clears throat> All right, so as, uh, as we go on here, uh, the end of that says, You will do well to avoid these things. Farewell. You will do well to avoid these things. Let me tell you today, if you avoid these things, you're going to do what? Well. Are you going to be better? Yeah, you're probably going to be healthier. Yeah, you'll be better. You'll probably be more clear-minded. You'll probably be more steadfast. You probably can draw a lot easier, closer to God when you don't have these things in between you and Him, right? So... You'll do well to follow these things, even here today. So, in verse 30 it says, So the men were sent off and went down to Antioch, where they were gathered the church together and delivered the letter. And the people read it and were glad for, it encouraged it, for its encouraging message. So the people read this and went, wow, we don't have to be involved in all this ceremonial cleansing and all these things. All this ceremonial stuff has been lifted off of us. We just have to abstain from these things. Now, 
And you guys can research this. I'm just going to tell you a little bit. You can research this. Don't do it now. Do it later. Make a note and do it later. There, there, a lot of people say that uh, the reason why they went to these things was because of the, uh, of the covenant that Noah made or God made with Noah and his sons when they came. And he said, I'm going to make this covenant with you. I'll never do this again. Here's a bow. Now you guys go and do these seven things. Some of these seven things are listed here. Uh, and they believe that that's where that came from. That's way, way early on. Health recommendations. Health for every part of who you are as a being. <clears throat> so search that out and look it up. It's exciting. So 32, it says, Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. Right there. There is leaders among believers. Right? There's a little thing going around. A lot of people have saw it. I've been saying it. My wife's been saying it. But if, if a true friend will lead you to Christ. And, and someone who is not your friend will lead you away from Christ. It's very easy for us to see. But then, oh, but the time in and the things that we've done together in the history. And Paul says, I count all that. Look, I change, I'm changing today. I got to lose some people. That's hard. It's hard for a lot of people, especially people who love people and want to make people happy and want to be involved in people. But sometimes you got to leave people behind. You know what? The time you had with them might have been that seed, and then you'll see them long time down the road, month down the road, year down the road. Because ultimately, if you're going to the same place, you're going to connect again, right? Wherever it is is, how, is, is wherever it is. Now, in, uh, in this text here that we're reading, I'm coming to a verse that if you have the NIV or some of the other texts, don't have that in there. <clears throat> so I gave it to her so she could put it up there. And at 33, it says, After spending some time there, they were sent off by the believers with the blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them to go back to Jerusalem. Verse 34 in a lot of different uh, texts, it's not in there. It's very important. However, it, seems, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. All right? So I, that, that's very important. To leave it out, to me, is very, very detrimental to the story. Very detrimental to the story. Why? Because, look at here's what happened. As we read the story... This man, these two men, they, this is their first time. This church is, is new, right? They're leaders in Jerusalem among the church. So they're sent out to go do this deal. Hey, man, here's your plane ticket. You guys are going to go down to this place, the two of you, and you're going to go with these guys, and you're going to word of mouth talk about what we're sending in this letter. You're going to do what you do here. We've seen you do it so famously. Well, one of them got down there and got, got the bug. I want to leave. I think I want to keep doing this. I think I really am called to do this. And that happens to us in our life. To leave that out means that you're like, later on you're going, well, where did Silas come into this picture? And it doesn't connect. Some people will say, well, there's a contradiction because now he's here when he was over there and we need to see that he didn't, he didn't decide to go back, right? He decided to stay. I'm going to keep doing this thing. He's on fire for it. He's excited about it. You can't leave that out. <clears throat> and they were glad for the encouraging message. They were glad for these men who came up and strengthened them with an encouraging message. Um, 
That's what, that's who Barnabas was. And that's who Silas was. That's who Judas was. They were encouraging men. We need that. We need that. <clears throat> There's always two sides to the coin. Always two sides. Leaders strengthen believers. That's a big deal. Like I said, friends, a friend that's going to lead you to Christ is a good friend. You can count on that. That's faithful, right? A friend that's going to pull you down, pull you away, take you away from that thing is not faithful. It's not a faithful friend because normally what's going to happen is you're going to call on that person and they're just going to go, "Yeah, sorry, I'm busy. Somebody who also knows that God's listening to what I say. God's watching what I do. He knows I have plenty of time. It's not going to tell you I, I don't have any time to do it. He's going to go and do it. There's a big deal. Big difference, right? And that's in the world, all right? Now we're, we're going to be in the church here. And now we're getting to the part, point here in uh, 35. It says in Paul and uh, Barnabas remained in Antioch there where they and uh, many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. Amen. Verse 36. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Now, sometimes we don't do this. But the Lord's not only telling them to do this and put it on Paul's heart to do this, uh, but we need to do this. You call somebody up and say, hey, man, how are you doing? Can I pray for you? Wonder how you are doing. Because we'll revisit We'll revisit our lives and go, oh, back at this time when I was... I see why God did that there. I see why he said duck and I ducked and, or I jagged when I should... I went over here because I, I would have done this. You know, you drive to the store. This dang light is making me mad. Everybody won't go fast enough. And then you come up on an accident that if you hadn't have been at that... Right now, this time of year, everybody's in a rush to get no place. Right? <clears throat> you come up and I, if I'd have been on time and that light wasn't or that guy didn't cut in front of me and I hadn't had to stay, I'd have got hit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's all we can say. But leaders will strengthen believers. Encouragers will strengthen leaders. And that needs to be part of the body. Well, we have that in this body. Right? It's, it's the same, same, but in a different way. Right? So maybe you're not the one that comes up here, but maybe you're the one that pulls somebody aside and says, Man, I really liked what you said in that Bible study on Saturday. I like what God's doing with you. I like the way He's making you think outside the box. You're studying for yourself. Those type of things are encouraging. And on the other hand, we need to encourage others that maybe it's not good to just sit there all the time. You need to get up and move, right? Okay, that's enough of that. We don't want to encourage anybody to move too much, right? <clears throat> so let us go back to all the towns. And that's exciting to me, to let us go back to all the towns. <clears throat> now we're coming up on it. Big deal here. Barabbas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. So if you guys remember the story in uh, earlier on in, in Acts, we're introduced to him. It's actually a cousin of Barnabas is John Mark. Okay? And Actually, in, in Acts uh, 13, 13, 13, here, um, he left. 
Paul and his companions sailed to Perga and Pamphylia, where John left them and went and returned to Jerusalem. Now, we don't have, we can't expound a whole lot about that. Was it the change of shift? Now Paul's in charge, and I don't really like the way Paul does things, and my uncle's not in charge anymore, whatever it was. I'm sorry, I, I need to go back to my mom. I, I'm homesick. I don't really like it out here on the road preaching. It's dangerous. I don't feel safe. Whatever it was, right? Whatever it was, Paul didn't like it. But uncle wanted to carry him. Now, who is uncle? Remember what his name means? Barnabas. Yeah. Son of encouragement. Yes. Son of encouragement. Yes. Remember who, uh, who took Paul and said, oh, nobody wants anything to do with Paul. Come here, Paul. I'm going to take you up to Jerusalem to meet all the boys. Because I know you're not trash. I see what God's got in you. Somebody can see through everything in someone. So he wants to take him. In 38, Paul, but Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. Had not continued with them in the work. Now here's what happens. We draw a line and we'll say, well, Barnabas was right. To go after that one and to love on that guy because he could become something. And some of us will go, well, Paul was right. We, this work's too important to have a flake with us. Somebody who's just going to take off whenever he wants to take off and not be faithful. Who's right? In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 19. Who's right? <laughs> like a broken tooth or a lame foot is the unfaithful man. You ever had somebody in your life that was like a sore tooth? Don't point at me, Deborah. <laughs> to rely on that person, unfaithful person, in, in the time of trouble... Is, is dangerous, right? That's hard to do. I mean, Paul's already, he's already, I, I, we were in this thing, we were going, and he said, no, I'm done. I'm out. It got too uncomfortable for me, I'm out. Paul's like, we ain't having that no more. This is too important. We've got work to do. We're going to dangerous places, and we don't want little baby pants getting his hurt feelings all over his place. We need to, there needs to be three of us, and not all of a sudden two of us. Right? And so Paul's looking at it like this. This is too important to be letting somebody come in here that's going to possibly jeopardize what we're doing. We need to keep going forward. Right? That's the vision for Paul. <clears throat> so I ask you, who's right? Barnabas, the son of encouragement, he was kind. He was a big man. Brought Paul in. He loved people. He never gave up on anyone. Right? He lived by Mark 12, 30 to 31. I didn't give it to her. But Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31, is the two commandments that Jesus gave us that does... that. All of them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Here's a man who already knew that. I need to love my neighbor. And we say, well, who's my neighbor? It's a person sitting next to you right now. If you get on the bus going somewhere else, it's a person sitting next to you right then. It's the person that's sitting next to you when you play musical chairs every time you sit down. That's your neighbor. That's your mission field. That's your place. That's the church. 
That's the idea that Jesus had. That's what these men are doing. Consider everyone in the in saved. I'm going to tell you this. Saved or not, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Saved or not, I'm considering you over here. Your choice is to go over there. I'm going to put the message in your ear, if you like it or not. That's the idea. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people aren't ready for it yet. They're not ready for the commitment. They're not ready for the message. They're just not there. We have to trust that. Paul is not having it, right? We ain't having it. Now, I want to tell you this, that Barnabas is not mentioned again. Does that mean Paul was right? No. Both of them are right. Years later, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 12, it says, With the help of... Of Silas, well, there he is, he comes up, uh, who I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that, uh, <clears throat> that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends uh, sends. You her greetings and does it, my son, Mark. This is John Mark. This is the one that he told, I ain't having him. Later on, Paul says, that's my son. Who changed? Who changed? Both of them. God had to do work in both of them. And they both changed. Now he's like, He's calling out, bring, bring Mark to me. He's my son. Sometimes when people go their separate way and they do their separate thing because of a disagreement, it's silly, it's stupid, but God's using things in a way that's mightier and bigger than we could ever imagine. You are who you are and you are how God made you. Some people encourage and chase after people. Some people have to keep the work going and keep going at the work. But I tell you what, if we're all going the same place, we're all going to meet again. Amen. The time that we have here that's separate, that's stressful and everything else is going to develop who we are and our characters. Right? Going on from there. uh, In Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. He says, now I want you to know, this is Paul, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. And we need to take that and wear that t-shirt. All the things that have happened to me. All the bad things and the good things. All the bad people and the good people. All the people I didn't agree with and all the people I did agree with. All those things compiled together in the end advance the gospel of God. That's what we're looking for, right? But we, oh, but right now this is not going to work. Oh, I don't understand. Oof. Advancing the gospel of God. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark, John Mark, and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Bring that guy, cast it out, and I didn't want with me because he's helpful to me now. What the heck? Once again, who changed? Both of them changed. Right? What would have happened if they'd have stayed together? Big mess. So God's doing something, even though we look and go, I don't know what God's doing. We're well, not supposed to know. Don't peek behind the curtain. That's why it's there. Just believe. Right? 
He is working something good. Amen. Look at the folks that came to this church today. Goodness. Amen. God is so great. What happens in our lives? Uh, God changed both of them. What happens in our lives? And I'm just going to go off. We'll, we'll look at different things. And I'm getting ready to run out of time. So uh, we look at different things. But what we do is we, we focus on, and I'm convinced. And, and my wife is also convinced. She's not going to tell you, but she's convinced. 50% of the time, I'm right. 50% of the time. I'm sold out. 50% of the time, I'm right. But what 50%? I don't know. I, that's smart. I know sometimes I'm right. But what we do is we look at the other side. and Just politics real quick because that's the easiest one. We look over there and go, that's what's wrong with those stupid... You know, we, we think about the 50% over there that we do not agree with and the 50% that I'm right. Right? We don't think about the 50% that I'm wrong and the 50% that they're right. That's the way God looks at things. So when we divide by only looking at their wrong and our right, we're wrong. Right? Both of them, if they'd have stayed together, they'd have been fighting. It would have been a horrible wreck. God's work not would have been hindered, right? But the gospel spread, and the good news spread, and wonderful things happened, and it got crazier and crazier as it went. I mean, we're not done. Some stuff's going to happen in the next few weeks. You guys are going to go, what? Unless you read ahead and you already know. Anyway. <clears throat> Paul said something, and let men know your moderation. And we look at the scriptures that say everything is good in moderation. In this case, the word moderation means means uh, not the same thing as we think. It means in your uh, in your modesty. Let your modesty be before men, not evil, good. That's what modest is, right? We believe that's what modest is. I believe that's what modesty is. We don't listen to that side. We don't listen to this side. We listen to what God's saying, right? Because you, you can look at the Democrats and you can find some good stuff. Unless you're only focusing on the bad stuff. How many of you have been married for a long time? How many of you think it's terrible? You're only focusing on the on the 20%, because I guarantee you somewhere in there, 80% is good. Quit looking at the 20, because the 80 is good. We had good times. We did good things. We laughed, right? But we focus on the bad. It's, it's inherent. It's terrible. We shouldn't do it. All right, so Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9, and... Uh, this disagreement here in, in verse 39, leave that up there, verse 39 of Acts, says it had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. And Barabbas took Mark and they sailed away. And wonderful things came of that. Mark went on. Barabbas isn't mentioned him. Mark went on and wrote the, the gospel of Mark. I mean, he did wonderful things for us today, benefiting us, Right? So both of them were right in what they did. It's just, are we chasing the right person? Are we, are we fighting for the right work on both sides? And, uh, <clears throat> and then it says, then Paul chose Silas, and they left. And uh, the believers and the grace of the Lord went with them, and, the, and they strengthened all the churches as they went. Now, Paul wrote this to us, and this is today, man. This is every bit of what's been happening before I started talking today. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say re again, rejoice. Amen? Who wants to do it? I didn't do it. 
<laughs> that, was, that was weak. <laughs> Rejoice. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Let your gladness be evident to all. For the Lord is near. He is never far from you. Amen. <clears throat> Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admired, admirable, and if it is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Just from reading that word today, that promise goes out to every one of you. Be encouraged. No matter what's going on, God's doing something. Even when it hurts, right? Especially when it hurts. We, we think we need to be involved in so much things. We get involved in stuff we don't even need to be a part of. We do, and, we'll, and I do it all the time. Why do I even, why am I even talking about this? You know, conversations where you start getting into something and it starts to slide the other way and you're like, why am I even talking about this? But I can't stop now, I'm almost to my point, which makes no sense anyway, right? (laughs) Only to me, everybody else is going to go, wow, he just opens his mouth, an idiot comes out. (laughs) Amen? Amen. Whatever is good in God's eyes, not our eyes, in God's eyes, in God's sight, God will set all things right, all things right in His eyes. In this season, in this time, in this year, at the end of this year, God's going to set everything right. We see that he orders the steps of the righteous man and woman. He will design the path before you and he'll keep it straight. You just got to walk it and trust him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's close out. All right, anybody that wanted to come or heard the shout out for later on, I think uh, I'm going to be here. I know Michael said he's going to be here. I'm going to hold him to it. And uh, he wants me to try to figure out how we can watch the game. So I'm going to try to hold it to him, and he's going to hold it to me, and we're going to try to watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> all right so god bless you all have a wonderful day let's close in prayer thank you jesus for this day lord we just thank you for the time that you give us lord we thank you for the encouragement that comes from your people lord because we know it comes directly to you from you in the time that we need it lord lord we just ask that you would uh Touch everyone who watches this video and uh, let them know that you are with them. And if they don't know you, Lord, or they have doubts, Lord, let them turn to know that you are the Father that has always been there, that has always loved them, and that has always watched their lives. And let them open their hearts to let you touch their lives, Lord. And then, Lord, just let them give up their lives over to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask these things. And all the church said, Amen. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you were blessed. If you have any questions, please give us a call, 682 
327-7082. We are at 7955 Reed Road in Azle, Texas. Y'all have a good day now, you hear?